Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Yes, it's Superman! Strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men. Superman, who can leap tall buildings of a single bound, race a speeding bullet to its target, then steal in his bare hands, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper, fights a never-ending battle for truth and justice. But before we join Superman, listen. And now to our story. As you remember, the yellow mask, posing as a government representative, made use of forged credentials to gain access to the laboratory of Wallace Thornton, designer of a radio-controlled mechanical man. Holding Thornton at gunpoint, the mask broke into a safe and removed the blueprint, showing how the mechanical man was constructed. But Thornton, in a last desperate attempt to prevent the theft, turned a dial on the control panel and set the giant steel robot in motion. Unable to stop it after slugging Thornton with the butt of his gun, the mask fled. Meanwhile, the mechanical man, driven by radio impulses, walked through a wall of the building and kept going, leveling everything in its path and terrifying every man, woman, and child. When last seen, the huge metal monster was headed for an orphanage farm in the suburb of Metropolis. Traveling in the same direction are Clark Kent and Lois Lane, star reporters for the Daily Planet, assigned to get a story on the mechanical man. Do you think there's anything to this mechanical man business, Clark? Anything more than a joke or an optical illusion? That's hard to say, Lois. Leeds is generally pretty reliable. He said he'd seen it. I get cold shivers thinking about it. Just imagine an army of mechanical men, solid lines of steel, a million human tanks that nothing could stop. Woo! Gasping. Yeah. Wonder whether we're on the right road. I haven't seen any signposts for miles. Why don't you stop at that gas station up ahead? There must be somebody there who can tell us. That's a good idea. I guess I was wrong. Nobody here. Yes, there is. A man's coming out of the house. Yeah. What's he carrying that shotgun for? I know. Look, there's a revolver strapped around his waist. It's allowed. I beg your pardon, but is this the road to Linwood? Yeah, it's the road to Linwood, all right, but you'd better not take it. Why, is it torn up? Construction? No, no. There's a monster loose up that way. A monster? That's right, lady. I come by here 20 minutes ago. That's why I'm toting all these firearms. Just in case he decides to come back. Did you see him? No. My boy did, though. He's a giant. He's wearing some kind of shiny armor. My boy said he was twice the size of an ordinary man. Yeah, I know it's hard to take, lady, but it's true. They're talking about it now on the radio. Special bulletins and warnings. Well, thanks a lot. You ain't going to Linwood, are you? I'm afraid we have to. So long. You're crazy if you do. Forcing the car to the limit of its speed, Kent races toward Linwood, convinced now that the mechanical man is more than just a myth. Meanwhile, two highway patrolmen, armed with rifles, are parked on the side road behind a screen of huge bushes, waiting for the great steel monster to come within range. Off in the distance, they can see its box-like head, its ruby eyes blinking like ghostly danger signals. They crouch low behind their patrol car. Get set, Joe. Here it comes. Oh, Okay. Aim for its head, for them blinking eyes. We gotta stop it. Keep low. Well, how about it? No, no, not yet. Now get close. We can't take no chances of missing. When you start choking, don't stop. Empty the magazine. All right now. I'll count three. One. Two. Three. Shoot! Run, Joe! Run! With a steel-jacketed bullet flattened against it like so much putty, the mechanical man plods on unharmed, save for the shattering of one of the red bulbs in its head. Now more horrible than ever, with only a single blood-red eye blinking like that of a monster cyclops, the huge man-made creature starts up the hill in the direction of the orphanage, only a mile away. There, in the administrative office... The superintendent, drawn and anxious, stands at the window, 
while the matron, nervous and pale, paces the floor. You'll wear that rug out, Miss Perkins. This is hardly the time for levity, Mr. Danforth. I'm beside myself. I don't know which way to turn. Why not try relaxing? You ask me to relax with a, with a bloodthirsty monster about to descend on us. Well, that's a slight exaggeration. So far, there have been no reports about this so-called monster's bloodthirstiness. But you do admit there is a monster. I admit to nothing yet. Oh, why haven't the police arrived? Well, they'll be here. Yes, after we're torn limb from limb, when it's too late. Mr. Danforth, I don't like to have to say this, but I feel you're taking your responsibility too lightly. The lives of a thousand children are in your hands. Thank you for bringing that to my attention, Miss Perkins. Sarcasm doesn't alter the situation. <laughs> what are you going to do? Just what I've been doing. Wait. If you prefer to leave the grounds, you're privileged to do so. But don't come back. <laughs> I must say you're acting in a very high-handed manner. I would never have suspected it of you. Your suspicions don't interest me at the moment. Well, what time is it? <laughs> Ten minutes to one. We've delayed the lunch hour long enough. I'm not going to starve those children because of some mythical monster. Will you please ring the lunch bell, Miss Perkins? Are you mad? Please ring the lunch bell. Do you know what you're doing? Bringing a thousand children together in one building so that monster can get to them all at once. It's murder. That's what it is. Mass murder. All right, Miss Perkins. I'll ring the lunch bell. What do you think those shots were that we heard a while back? No, it's hard to tell. Maybe deer hunters or someone sniping at the mechanical man. Yeah. You should be getting to the orphanage farm any minute now. Keep your eyes open. I am, but I don't know what to look for. Unfortunately, I don't number any mechanical men among my acquaintances. Still don't believe it exists, do you? Even after that story the gas station man told us. I can't make myself believe it. That's the trouble. It's too fantastic. It's incredible. Yeah. Like a nightmare full of strange shapes. Just as Mr. White said, things don't happen that way. Yeah, that's probably what your grandfather would have said, too, if he'd seen an airplane 50 years ago. I suppose you're right. Look, look, Clark, isn't that the entrance to the orphanage just up ahead there? Well, it looks like it. Well, either we beat the mechanical man or he's already been here. Or he's non-existent. Like those men from Mars that caused a panic a few years ago, remember? Uh-huh. I have a funny feeling this is slightly different. Well, maybe you're right. That brick building looks like the office. Yes, I'll pull up. Like we're being welcomed by a committee of one. Yeah. Or is that hawk nosed female running toward us, the monster? Oh, are you the police? Are you the police? Uh, no, madam. We're newspaper reporters. Oh. Are you by any chance the orphan superintendent? No, I'm the matron. Oh. Mr. Danforth is in his office. I'll take you to him. This way, please. Thank you. Come on, Lois. <clears throat> Some newspaper reporters to see you, Mr. Danforth. I can't see any reporters now. now. We're not here in a repertorial capacity, Mr. Danforth. This is Miss Lane, and my name is Kent. Oh, oh how do you do? How do you do? I'm sorry, but we're all under a strain at the moment. <laughs> That's putting it mildly. Miss Perkins, our matron, is under a particular strain. Yes, it's uh, quite evident. Well, I'd like to know what normal individual wouldn't be with a monster about to descend on you. I take it the mechanical man has not yet arrived. No, have you heard anything about it? Nothing except that one of our local reporters phoned to tell us it was moving in the direction of the orphanage. Has anyone seen this, uh, this Frankenstein, Mr. Kent? From what we can learn, a number of people have had that rare privilege. <laughs> Seems that nobody waits long enough to get a close-up view. That's what makes the reports vary. Some say it's a giant in a coat of mail, others that it's a metal monster breathing fire and brimstone. Personally, I think it's all imagination. Mm. That's very interesting, but hardly authentic. Your thoughts on the matter. Miss Perkins, perhaps you'd better go to the dining room while the children are having lunch. I prefer staying here, if you don't mind, Mr. Dancer. Then keep quiet. Well, I, I have a very idea. Never in all my life. I said keep quiet or leave. All right. I will leave. I'll go to my children. I'll die with them if necessary. Farewell. <clears throat> Sorry, Mr. Danforth. I assume we were responsible for that emotional outburst. No, not at all, Miss Lane. Miss Perkins has gone to pieces. Why on earth she should be afraid of any monster, though, is beyond me. <laughs> Maybe it's no joking matter. Perhaps it's more serious than we're willing to admit. You say there have been some eyewitness reports, Mr. Kent? Not a few, but no two agree. Boiled down, the creature seems to be a metal robot, a mechanical man. 
How he happens to have motion and who is controlling that motion is a mystery. Well, if he's coming, he'd better hurry. I'm getting a little annoyed. I'll try the police again. I called them 20 minutes ago and they promised to send some men over. Operator, uh, let me have the police station at Linwood, please. This is Mr. Danton at the orphanage farm. I beg your pardon? Oh, I see. Thank you. All right, the line must be busy. Everyone clamoring for police protection. No, the operator says there's no one at the station. The entire force is out. Probably huh? monster hunting like we are. It may become the new national game, you know. You could call... <laughs> what is it, Lois? Look, coming out of the crest of that hill. The monster. Great Scott. Can't believe my eyes. Are we seeing things? No, it's a mechanical man. They were right. He's heading right for that dining room. There are a thousand children in there. Clark, where are you going? Head him off. Well, don't be a fool. You can't do it alone. I think I can't let go of my arm, Lois. There isn't much time. You'll be taking an awful chance, Mr. Kent. Lois, please. I'm not going to let you go. Sorry, but I can't stand here disgusting. Clark, come back. Clark. Ignoring Lois' frenzied cry, Clark Kent goes out to meet the huge steel monster as it lumbers forward like some giant prehistoric beast. Is he a match for the brainless creature, even as Superman? And will he be forced at last to reveal his double identity to Lois to let her see that Clark Kent and Superman are one and the same person? A thousand children are in danger. Something must be done and done quickly. What will Kent do? Don't fail to hear the next startling episode. Tune in and listen with the Superman. Don't forget, tune in again for the next thrilling episode with Superman. Look, up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine.